Hi there, that's Talk Sports fans. Today, I'm on to say I've got ex-professional footballer Rod- Rodney Jack to join me. Thanks for coming along today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, that's fine. Oh, I thought um, it'd just be nice to have a chat with a professional footballer. I would imagine, I guess the first question is, it takes a lot of dedication, both physically and mentally, um, and a lot of sacrifices. Would that be the case? Yes, that's fine. I mean, um, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll say from when I come from the Caribbean, when I first come over here, it was coming into an unknown. And it opened my eyes because if you want something bad in life, you have to, you know, appreciate getting a chance and an opportunity and grab it by the both hands. For me, I wanted to do the same. So I wanted to make something better of my life and for my family. So I had to do anything that is necessary, train hard, work hard, listen, and then put teaching to use. Yep. And um, I think it's all the my sort of thing in life is if you work hard, good things should happen for you. Yes, I mean, um, yeah, you work hard, you know, you listen to the right people, um, you take on board, you follow the right instruction, you you head the right way. Um, you know, sometimes it takes a bit more um, to get through in life. Um, you know, it does not as goes to plan, but it's how you deal with it. And for me, it's having the right people around me at the time when I first came over here to point me in that right direction to know that this is what I want in life and this is how I can achieve it by blood, sweat and tears. And, you know, I put my foot down, get my head in it. And, um, you know, I was lucky to have a fortunate career out of it. Yeah. And uh, it's nice for me to have you on because I watched a lot of... Um leagues outside the premiership growing up and although I'm a West Ham fan I watched a lot of you at crew on the telly and uh, before uh, my disabilities allowed me not to be able to leave the house I saw you playing for Rushton and Diamond so it's nice to have you as the first guest on. You know, I am so pleased, you know, um, that I'm having this opportunity here to speak to somebody like yourself who loved the game and who's willing to do something else to, you know, to enable others to um, listen in. You know, credit to you. You know, I should be the one who's interviewing you, not that you interviewing me. But you know what? It just shows you the type of people who is out there. There's good, there's bad and the ugly. And you just take the, the cake on, you know, what a human being should be. And I thank you for having me on this show. Yeah, thank you for that. And I guess the next uh, question is, um, was there a club in your career what you felt the most connection with the fans? Obviously, you had a few you, clubs. You, yeah, you know what? Crew. I'm not... Go on, yeah. Um, I am not like, just going to... Yeah, sorry, go you on. No, like, obviously, I know there's. it's hard to um, say there's just one. And obviously, I know you had longer stays at teams like Crew and so forth. So um, I understand if there's not really one, because I would imagine it's hard not to get connected to any of them. You know what? I I have I've I've got um, I've got to say you know without being a cliche answer, the teams that are most are connected to because. I have to say, Talk United will be on the top of the list because of the sheer factor that I started there. And, you know, I worked hard to um, achieve one of being the fans' favourite at one time. Um, and what stands out for me is that the people down there, Torquay, remind me so much of home with the weather, you know, the, the, the friendliness. So I had a really good connection with the fans down there. Um, you know, everywhere I went down there, I had people coming up to me saying, hiya, how are you? You know, during the good times and the bad times, it's not just the good times I have people coming and talk to me. I had people coming and talk to me to the bad times, you know, so it made me feel welcome, you know, and I didn't want to move. But at the same time, I was doing so well at Talk United that they, that they had no choice to sell me. So on that note, my heart is with Talk United. Then I came to crew. And I had the same relationship with uh, the fans at crew. So um, 
you can get connected to you know as many teams as you want, but you just have to be genuine. So for the sheer reason that I'll have to say Talk United for the number one and crew for the number two as well, because the both teams changed my life, you know, for the better. Um, and was it also a situation? Obviously, it was good for your career, but did you also feel because Torquay needed Ramang? Did you also feel not a pressure, but maybe a duty to if they needed Ramangi? It suited both parties, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, for me personally, I I wanted to stay um, at Talk United because it. It reminded me so much of the Caribbean. And you know what? I felt at home. It felt at ease because sometimes as a professional, you take very long time to settle in. But I settled straight in because of the weather, the atmosphere. And like I said, it was it was like, you know, I was originally from there. So um, for me, it was a bit of a, um, you know, one of those things. I didn't want to leave. But at the same time, I understand it was a lot of money. So I was a bit torn between excitement and sadness at the same time but I sat down and I talked to the chairman Mike Baston at the time and he explained the situation to me I tried to explain the situation to him but at the end it was best for both parties because at the same time they was having you know a lot of money coming to their club so they could um, you know stay afloat and you know do different stuff so at the same time as with the boat sadness and happiness at the same time yeah and uh, I guess the next question is um, I know you. there would be a lot of goals, but is there one goal that stands out in your career, not necessarily the best, but is the most special to you? Well, um, I will say, if I, if I, I, got, I, I will say two goals that, that stand out for me. Um, one going with um, Talk United versus Scarborough. I scored twice, and um, it was, it, we ended up going through the cup for that game. Um, it stand up because I received the ball from the halfway line and outrun the defender and run the goalkeeper. So it was special because I scored the goal that takes us actually to the next stage of the cup. With crew, it has to be when I played against Man City. Uh, Michael was in goal. It was in a cup game as well. And I scored my first goal against a well-known top-class keeper, as in him. So, yes, I got two. So, uh, Smichael and Talk United versus Scru uh, Scrubber. Yeah, and I guess it must have been special scoring against Smichael because he is not even just played at the top level. He would be up there for best goalkeepers well, ever, yeah. like, in the conversation. <laughs> Yes, you know what? It was a very exciting moment. It was one of the quickest goals in the cup as well because by the time the fans settled in, I already scored. So for me, it was one of those that um, it stand out because everybody knows who Smichael is. You know, he scored against a top-class keeper who played for Man United, you know, then went to Man City, played all over his national team. you got to take great pride in, in, in coming up against people like that. And yes, it stands out for various reasons. So yeah, scoring against the Great Dane, as they used to call him, was a glory to do. Yeah. And um, is the strike partner what you felt brought best of your Detroit? Is that not necessarily the best player, but just what you maybe had the best connection with or... Well, I, yeah, um, I'll say when I, when I came to crew, um, because I was, um, you know, when I first come to crew, I was of a raw talent. And then when I came to crew, I had my, my coach, my manager, Dario Brady, um, you know, who um, showed me that um, there's more to running, playing football. There's more to that than running and trying to be quick. There's also bringing the teammates in. So I'll have to say, um, there's a few players striking wise that I have to say, but, one of my best, um, you know, partnership is when I was at Crew. I used to play with a lad called Dean Ashton. Yeah. And um, you know, he went on to do bigger and better things. So um, he was a big lad. You know, he was physical, and uh, we had a good understanding. We scored a lot of goals between us. So I will say Dean Ashton for that various reason because he went on to be an England international. Yeah. And um, as a West Ham fan, he's someone yeah. what always means a lot to me because he went to West Ham 
not long after I started supporting them and obviously the, your first real strike, what you rate, is always quite special to you. Yeah, he was a special player. So, yes, we both have similar similar interests in the same player. So, yes, yes, he's he was a brilliant player. Yeah. And um, I guess um, another question is, is there a move what maybe didn't happen, but you think, Maybe what if I uh, know from what I read, um, you had a trial with Newcastle, but it just didn't happen. Yeah, yes, yes. That's that's when Kevin Keegan was the manager. I was doing so well um, when I was playing that he showed an interest in me. I then had a trial at Newcastle. I went up there, had a two week trial. Everything went to plan. Um, the offer to take me on only for me to be let down because I didn't pay 50% of my game. So I was denied a work permit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, at the time, there were lots of good players up there. There was um, David Ginola, there's Aspirella, there was uh, Les Fordinan, you know, there was Peter Baisley. They had so many great players. They had Shaka Hizl up in goal. You know, at the time, I was starstruck, you know, Alan Shaker. It was one of those that I couldn't believe my luck. But at the same time, you know, he saw something in me that he wanted to give me a contract. And, you know, just for the same reason that, you know, I did not pay 50% of the work um, for the game. So my work permit was denied. But they always say one door closed and one door open. So I buckled down and, you know, I got my move. So it, it would have been different if I had that move. But like I said, stranger things has happened and things happen for the right reason. So it was meant for me to be in the Premier League. It was meant for me to any lower leagues and you know you know stride from there yeah um and uh, i guess my uh last question is is the manager what you feel um you really helped your game come on yeah um well, well you know um can you remember uh donna raiden um at talk united yeah um you know, he was a wise guy. Kevin Hodges as well, who was down there. Those were my first coaches. So I learned a lot from them, um, you know, because um, these were players that, you know, played in their time. I learned a lot, especially with Don O'Reilly. Um, you know, he was um, a good, good friend of mine. We still is now. We still correspond on Facebook. And um, I think he helped me a lot. I had another player there, you know, who, who brought me a lot of help in Paul Gibbs as well. We used to call him Gibble. Yeah. Um, you know, he helped me a lot. We were really good friends. You know, it's one of the person because he did it in the, in the top flight leagues with him. It's one of the person I could have talked to in Paul Gibbs. You know what I mean? Um, you know, sometimes if I don't have a good game, I can always relate to Paul and he'll give me the right answers. So um, Donna Raid and Paul Gibbs and Kevin Hodges. When I came to crew, um, Dario Grady, like I said, you know, he's one of the best as they come. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, you know, he had time to, um, you know, point me in the right right and coach me, you know, uh, try to get me into the, the, the right state of mind, you know, uh, bring my teammates in. So I learned a lot from Dario Grady, you know, I, I stepped up from from a talk United into the, the first division and, um, you know, I had to, because it was a lot of money for me to move to crew as well, I had to learn fast to repay, you know. So, um, yes, um, both, both teams for different reasons. So, yes, um, both managers played a big part. Yeah, and obviously, Dave Grady also had a very good record of picking up people from maybe lower league clubs and making them better, um, not just for his team as a stepping stone for other teams, I think. Yeah, yes, he had an eye for spotting raw talent, as you call, um, because it, crew is a business. It's, um, you know, you try and spot talent and you try and sell them on to to stay afloat, you know what I mean? Um, so he always had an eye for um, spotting the, the odd talent out there and making a lot of money for the club. Um, it's one of the things um, I would say outside the Premier League, crew is one of the best facilities for youngsters or sports in general with football because it's set up for youngsters to come and learn the trade. Because if you look at crew, they produce so many youngsters that go on to different teams and do well for themselves, you know, and it's always been like that. So. With that, you got to look at it that he had um, a good repetition in producing youngsters and going on to bigger and better things, yes. Yeah, I agree. I always looked at him as 
a bit like Harry Redknapp in like had an eye for a bargain and made yeah. the club money at the same time. That's right. Yeah, and I guess um, that pretty much is it. Unless there's anything you'd like to add. Look, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity here, you know, um, for this chance to, you know, talking to yourself and, you know, talking to others who may be listening. The thing is that if you ever need any favor at all, you got a friend in me, you just drop me a line. You tell me if you need anything, you know, if I could help, I'd gladly do it. If you ever need any more conversation with me outside of this here, no matter what, you give me a ring. No matter what people may say about your parents or anything like that, like I said, it'd be nice to face face to face each other, but at the same time, I respect your risk. But you don't have to hide from me, you know. You got a friend in me for life, so you don't worry about that, okay? Anytime you need a conversation, you know where to call. Okay, thank you. And I will love to have you on sometime in the future. Anytime you're ready, Prosperity, you got it first. Okay, thank you. You're very um, welcome. And um, I guess that's it for the show. Thanks for listening. Let's talk sports fans. Thank you.